Freddy vs. Ash, the fan novel by A.S. Eggleston. Chapter 9 Blood, flesh, and brain shot out from the back of the demon's head like confetti. The demon's blood splattered in bloody patches against the railing behind him. He instantly dropped to the ground, permanently dead. His arm still outside the window, Ash grabbed his shotgun by the pump, shook it down, cocking it. A coy grin surfaced on his face. He laughed to himself. That's what I'm talking about he yelled. As he drove further, Ash spotted two more deadites ahead of him, one on his left and the other on his right. The one on Ash's left was a woman, brunette, probably in her 20s. She wore a purple silk nightgown that cut off just above her knee. Her skin was dark and her hair had soft curls that came down to her shoulders. You could tell that she had been a beautiful woman before she came across whatever vicious deadite that poisoned her. If she hadn't been possessed, she would have been the perfect woman for him. Too bad the good ones are always taken, or possessed. Her face, however, had been mangled. The corners of her mouth were contorted, curving upward into a bloody, demented smile. She had cuts that went vertically across her eyes. They sliced away her eyelids and caused her to bleed black and green blood from her sockets. She stared at Ash, twisting and stroking her hair, smiling her perverted smile. Her hands were dirty, and her nails were rotted and covered in dried blood. Ash aimed the shotgun at the flirtatious Deadeye. Sorry, babe, he said as he drove closer towards the demon. Not that desperate yet. Ash pulled the trigger. The demon woman's smiling face had now been obliterated. Her meaty flesh, skeleton fragments, and everything that had been contained inside it sprayed everywhere. The impact from the blast caused her to be knocked back. She flipped over the metal railings and fell 30 feet on a boxcar, ricocheting onto the rocky ground. Next was the Deadeye on his right. This one had rotted significantly. 
His skin had a bluish coloration all over him. He had no mouth, only gums and bloody teeth. The right side of his face had somehow been ripped off or bitten off, allowing Ash to see part of his skull. He also had a large chunk of flesh removed from the right side of his chest, leaving his ribcage and lung exposed. Ash observed his lung expanding and contracting as the demon snarled furiously at him. The demon hissed in a low voice. Coming for you, he snarled. Hey, ugly, Ash said out to the demon. The deadite snarled at him again, daring him. Ash reached for the 9mm pistol holster under his jacket and aimed straight at the hideous monster. Ash grinned and cocked his chin upward. How about a little superior firepower, he said. Ash shot out the passenger window, putting a bullet hole in the deadite's forehead. The demon dropped down to his knees and finally flat on his face, dead. Ash sped up and put the gun back in its holster. He didn't bother with discarding the bodies. As soon as the sun would rise, the corpses would immediately disintegrate to mere dust. No one would ever think to look twice at the scene. At least these deadites did something that made Ash's job a little easier. He eventually took the exit off the overpass and was about to head home when he spotted something illuminated from the far edge of his headlights. It looked like a body. Or maybe two. Ash screeched his car to a halt and stared at the bodies. It was a woman hunched over the body of a man who looked like he was dead. He couldn't see her face as her back was turned to him. As always, Ash expected the worst. So before he got out of the car, he made sure his 9mm was loaded and ready to go. He stepped out of the car and slammed the door. Ash walked slowly to the woman, his metal hand under his jacket ready to attack at any second. He could have been completely wrong. Maybe these two were just innocent people, Ash thought. And maybe this guy fell victim to a violent crime or, worse, a deadite. If that was the case, Ash needed to get the woman out of there quickly. When he was just a few feet away from her, Ash stopped and planted his feet to the ground. He lowered his head, trying to catch a glimpse of her face, but she turned away whenever Ash looked at her. He tried to sound calm and reassuring for her. Come on, he said, try trying to lead her away from the dead body. Miss, it's not safe for you to be out here. I know it's hard to leave him behind, but you have to get out of here before one of these things gets you too. Ash took another step forward and put his hand on her shoulder. He could now get a much better look at the young man. His eyes gazed past her and looked at the corpse. There wasn't a spot on him that wasn't covered in blood. His cadaver eyes looked up at the sky, lifeless and empty. His mouth was open slightly, with streaks of his blood tracing from the corners. As Ash looked over to his midsection, he saw that the man's stomach and chest had been ripped open. His shredded flesh pointed up and out, like bark from a dead tree. His insides were empty, no bones, no lungs, and no heart. Ash was no stranger to this kind of image, but it still sometimes made his face stiffen in, disgust. Ash was only human after all. The woman finally spoke, but her body stayed in the same crouched position. I'm, I'm so glad that you found me, she said in a scared, timid voice. I didn't know what I was going to do. Her hand moved slowly to meet Ash's, which still rested on her shoulder. Ash's eyes darted at the woman's hand. He saw a gold band that resembled an engagement ring. Yet another future ruined by those damn deadites, Ash thought. Ash felt a wetness on his hand. As he looked closer, he saw that her hand was drenched in blood. It was the man's blood. The woman yelled in a scratchy, witch-like voice. Because I'm hungry for seconds. She gripped Ash's hand tight like a vice and twisted it until the bone, his wrist made a cracking noise. Ash screamed in pain. The woman whipped around and revealed her face to him. She was indeed a deadite. Her skin was a sickly green color and her eyes were as wide as ping pong balls. She had stringy blue pulsating veins streaked across her entire face. Bright crimson blood was dripping from her mouth down to the bottom of her shirt. The sharp pain in his wrist caused him to fall to his knees. The twisting agony raced up and down his forearm. These demons had been known to possess the strength of ten men. The woman stood up straight. You grow weak, she bellowed. 
and as your strength slowly fades away, it only makes it easier for him to enter the world of the living. <laughs> In the blink of an eye, the demonic entity hunched over Ash, making her close enough to him to smell the rotting flesh of her latest victim on her breath. You are nothing but a vessel, a gateway, <laughs> she said. Blood spat out of her mouth as she spoke. When the Dark One is free, the Chosen One, she moaned at the thought of what she said next. Shall die! <laughs> Ash grimaced. He mentally blocked the stinging pain in his arm and reached for his gun with his metal hand. Well, I got news for you, she-bitch, he said to the Deadite. I don't go down without a fight. He pulled out the 9mm and shot the woman in the head. The impact from the bullet caused blood to spray out like a garden hose. Some of the blood splattered on Ash's face, on his jacket, and his white work shirt. Ash stood back up and moved his wrist around. It still hurt, but he knew the pain would subside later on. He looked at the red spots on his shirt. He realized that maybe white wasn't a suitable color for deadite slaying. Ash turned around to go grab a rag in the car to wipe his face. Suddenly, he felt something grab him by the ankle. Ash turned back around and saw that it was the young man, who only a minute ago was cold and dead. The man howled, and in a chorus of voices said, Yeah, Ash said, as he pointed his gun at the Deadite. Like I haven't heard that one before. Ash squeezed the trigger and... It was game over for Steven when Cooper shot him to death during a Call of Duty multiplayer match. Steven was certain he was going to win that time. He had it all planned out. He was going to crouch beside the ruins of a broken down building and shoot an unsuspecting Cooper with a sniper until he shot Steven in the back of the head before he could even hide. Cooper raised his hands in victory. Woo! He yelled at the top of his lungs. He stared at the television screen, completely oblivious to the dirty look Steven was giving him. Stephen threw his controller on the couch cushion beside him. Dang it, he said. His nostrils flared and his lips pursed like he had just eaten a lemon. Cooper turned to his left to face Stephen. Ha ha, he taunted him. Got you that time, bitch. Cooper started moving his hands, dancing on the couch. He started to sing to himself. That's how I roll, that's how I get all the ladies. That's how I roll, that's how I get all the ladies. Evelyn, Jill, and Faith stood beside the entryway, watching the guys play their game and look like idiots doing it. Evelyn nodded in disapproval as she watched Cooper taunt his friends. Does he ever shut up? Jill asked her. Not really, no, Evelyn said. She suddenly pointed at Cooper and said to both Jill and Faith, You know, if this were a horror movie, he'd be the first one to die. The girls laughed at the thought of Cooper getting his comeuppance, all the while watching his victory dance. Hail to the king, baby. Okay, Slashaholics, this has been Chapter 9 of Freddy vs. Ash by A.S. Eggleston. Just a short little chapter I wanted to throw out to let you guys know I'm going to get these narrations out a lot quicker now. I really enjoyed this whole scene with Ash and the Deadites. I, I love voicing the Deadites. I hope that uh, the effect I use for their voice isn't annoying or anything. Uh, I thought it was a little creepy myself. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys are enjoying this book so far. I look forward to coming back very soon with more. It really is a fun story, and I mean, Freddy vs. Jason vs. Ash has already been done in comics, but just having Freddy and Ash facing off against each other, I think it's very interesting, uh, original, and I'm looking forward to uh, seeing how this all comes to a head at the end. Um, looks like we're about to get back to seeing what Cooper and Steven and Jill and Faith and Evelyn and everybody's up to, and uh, I'm curious to see how quickly they're going to fall to Deadites or Freddy, and or Freddy. Uh, let me know what you guys thought. I'll be back very soon with more. Uh, I put the same picture at the end of this episode as I did the last narration uh, because nobody's guessed it yet. So if you can guess the distorted picture uh, at the end of this video when I'm done talking, let me know in the comments. And if you're the first one to do it, I'll hook you up with something like an ebook or something like that. If you've already won in the past two or three uploads, 
uh, let somebody else win, give it a couple more uploads, and then you can try again. Uh, but okay, that's it for now. As always, thanks for listening. Be excellent to each other. And as always, pleasant dreams! All right, guess that picture. <laughs>